here are some reflections I want to share with you uh, for this liturgy. And the first one is that we are celebrating the nativity of St. John the Baptist. And we are celebrating the nativity of St. John the Baptist with the highest ranking of celebrations in the church. It is a solemnity. You know what a solemnity, solemnity is, for example, Christmas, for example, Easter, and now we have the nativity of John the Baptist, a solemnity. We don't even celebrate the birth of our Blessed Mother with a solemnity, and why? Now, John the Baptist is probably the most uncomfortable, straightforward, and rude person we find in the Bible. <laughs> he was Jesus' cousin. And Jesus said about him, truly I tell you, among those born of women, there has no reason anyone greater than John the Baptist. Wow, that's a very strong statement about his cousin John the Baptist. We know where John the Baptist lived, how he dressed, what was his diet. We know that he lived in the wilderness. That means it's a rude, it's a hard life of isolation in the desert. We know that he wore clothes made of camel's hair. And Jesus referring to his, the, where he, the way he, uh, he, he he used to dress, he said, he doesn't wear, uh, he doesn't, uh, says, um, wear clothes like soft raiment of noble men. And then we know what his diet was. He ate locust and honey. So you see, it's anything, anything nice, anything comfortable, anything soft. John the Baptist is someone you probably won't invite for dinner at home unless he takes a bath, changes his clothes, and is willing to eat a piece of pizza. <laughs> Otherwise, not the right kind of guy. He may have looked very hardy and rush. We know how he talk. He talk directly, fearless, and bold one who doesn't hold his tongue back. This is the way he spoke. He said, therefore, to the crowds that came out to be baptized by him, you brood of vipers. Wow. What about if I start my, I look at you, I begin to say, you brood of vipers. I cannot count the tomatoes I was going to receive, you know? <laughs> That's the way he was. And he says, who warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Bear fruits. Every tree, therefore, that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Bad public speaking skills. <laughs> they will not like you if you continue talking in these terms. He goes farther. And the crowds ask him, this is the gospel, huh? what then shall we do? And he answered them, whoever has two tunics is to share with the one who has none, and whoever has food is to do likewise. Tax collectors also came to be baptized and said to him, teacher, what shall we do? And he said to them, collect no more than you are authorized to do. And soldiers asked him, and we, what shall we do? And he said to them, do not extort money from anyone by threats or by false accusation and be content with your wages. Really bad marketing. <laughs> you don't tell people things that make them feel uncomfortable. You just tell them that they are okay, that you are wonderful people. Don't ask them to change. Don't ask them to share. Don't ask them to stop doing wrong things. Don't ask them to elevate from where they are. He went farther and he told to the king in his face, 
you are an adulterer because you have taken your brother's wife. You, John, does mess around with politicians and lawmakers. John was killed. What a man. Now my question is, what do you think that Jesus admired so much in this man that he said, this is the greatest among those born of a woman. Nevertheless, he was so rude and was an easy temper that he had. What I see in John, and I hope you will agree with me, is his capacity to speak, to stick to what is true, and to confront error, lies, and dishonesty. John was a man of his word. He delivered the message just as God sent him to do. On the first reading today, using the words of Isaiah, the liturgy applies to John the Baptist, and this is what we heard. The Lord called me from birth, from my mother's womb, he gave me my name. He made of me a sharp-edged sword and concealed me in the shadow of his arm. He made me a polished arrow. John came to this world, world excuse me, to be a sharp edge sword, to be a polished arrow, to combat dishonesty, corruption, decep deception, and hypocrisy. John came to elevate this world to a better place. And I'm sure that each one of you here, because you are young, you all have a little John the Baptist inside. I know that young people feel disgust and aversion towards anything that sounds like hypocrisy and dishonesty. Young people mess up but they dislike intensely corruption and cannot stand people that say one thing and they do a different one. We adults, we tend to compromise and we easily learn to live within a hypocrite world and deceive. We need you. We need the young people in the church to help in us to be bold, to speak out, to tell always the truth, to reject hypocrisy in the church, and to be courageous, daring to change the, to challenge the world, and to change the world, to elevate the world with the heart of the youth. I know you feel it. Share it with us. Help us to elevate the church. When my, I am 30 years being a priest, and you know there are some experiences in life that change the way you live your priesthood. And one of them was my experience with my youth group. Of course, I was a younger priest, and I work in Italy, and I have my youth group in my parish. And the youth group was composed by college students. There were college in the 1820s. And um, of course I came, a young priest, with my books of theology, the doctrine, my liturgies. And these guys kind of told me, I, we don't care about your books and about your liturgies. They care for the poor. And they introduced me into their world. They were a wonderful people with a tremendous care for the homeless. That's what they did. They knew by name all the homeless of the city I, my parish was. And they organized for them parties and a lot of loving things. And this stuck my heart saying, wow, Probably the church is also, and probably more, 
about loving the poor. And it's something that I received from my youth group. They were very diff difficult for me. I can tell you, it was hard to work with them because they're messed up a lot. <laughs> but something when I left the parish, I took with myself. And this is what the church needs. And that's why Pope Francis, it probably you have read these words of a herd, told to the youth and the world would taste. And I quote, let me tell you what I hope, <clears throat> what I hope will be the outcome of World Youth Day. I hope there will be noise. I want you to make yourselves heard in your diocese. I want the noise to go out. I want the church to go out onto the streets. I want us to resist everything worldly, everything static, everything comfortable, everything to do with clericalism, everything that might make us closed in ourselves. In other words, youth, shake this world. Make noise. Elevate the world. Elevate the church. Elevate us in the church. Yes, my young friends, you have it in your heart. Tell the world about Jesus. Do not fear. Change things that are not right. Make of this world a civilization of love. Probably the world, the world that we are handing on to you guys is not ideal. You can change it with Jesus. And keep the church always young with your presence, with your energy, and the sincerity of your heart. Jesus loves you and counts on you. And this is what it's about. You are the ones, probably we, can, we don't, you are the ones who can elevate humanity, elevate the world, elevate the church. But you can only do it with Jesus. And let's take the example of John the Baptist, the greatest in Jesus' eyes, because he has the courage, because he never hold his tongue back, because he's always, always spoke the truth, because he was willing to suffer even persecution and death to be faithful to Jesus' message. Saint John the Baptist, pray for us.